Hey traders and investors, welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth for a daily market recap. Today is Thursday, February 25th. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about a possible market correction and a market crash. So we'll look at some news and events, and then we'll look at the overall broader market and some individual tickers. But before we do, make sure to smash the like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this perspective on the market. So Treasury yield surged past 1.6%, sounding the alarm for risk assets. And we saw that amongst all categories and assets, crypto, metals, stocks, everything was down today. And this came off uh, some good numbers. We actually had good numbers in the initial jobless claims. We were expecting 838. We came in at 730 and we were 841 last week. So we beat estimates and we came in lower than last week. But the Inflation concerns were eased by the Fed yesterday, but now we're looking at Treasury yield curves and that's spooking the markets at the moment. We also saw Coinbase files for direct listing after revenue more than doubles in 2020. And Robinhood is still on track for a hot IPO as well, despite the GameStop uproar. And we did see some huge moves in GME overnight. They ran it to 200 up, I think it was like over 300%. But very notable weakness today in Tesla and if you remember from my video yesterday, I said that the markets are very correlated to crypto and Tesla is very correlated to Bitcoin. So what happened today? We had news that the SEC is investigating, um, is uh, basically Elon Musk is being investigated by the SEC because of his tweets on Dogecoin. So it had to do with crypto. Crypto started to sell off and then Tesla started to sell off. And then the market started to sell off and all day long, crypto was pulling back and, and Tesla was pulling back. And guess what the market did? It pulled back as well. So we need to keep watching those correlations and shout out to Patrick in our group as well. Um, he mentioned that he was a little bit worried by the volatility coming back with GME. So I said that as well. I said that I agree that the fact that they're running it again means that volatility is coming back and Maybe you're using GME as a type of volatility index uh, indicator at this point because of how reliable it's been. But like I said, we knew to be cautious of bull traps and the fact that they were running GME said to be cautious of volatility and just bubbles and overall manipulation in the market. So we'll take a look at the bull in the bear list. So on the bear list, we had Riot, JMA, NEO, ABNB, AMC. And on the bull list, we had GME, NGA, VEGA. So GME finished up 18%. But like I said, they ran this insane, let's just bring on extended hours, insane up to $200 and ultimately closed down at 108, running here a little bit after hours, about 10%. And we didn't really see much follow through in BlackBerry. I had a couple uh, day trades on BlackBerry today and made a uh, pretty good profit on that. So I was happy. And like I said, AMC was a little bit target today, but then we saw, we just saw it all fade the entire day. BlackBerry, AMC, GME, SNDL faded as well. So a little bit worrisome that we're seeing that group come back. And I mentioned this in my video yesterday. Um, I said because of the GME uh, running and I said because of these closes at resistance. If you take a look, we had all time high 394.16, 392.64, 392.38, 392.22, lower high every time we closed right at resistance. Everybody and their dog said, oh, I'm not hedging. I'm bullish. I'm bullish. I'm bullish. That told me to be cautious. And on the hourly, I said to private members and in my video yesterday, I cautioned time and time again that we didn't have an hourly high or low all the way down until 385. We closed right near resistance. We didn't consolidate on the hourly and I said be, ca be cautious, very cautious of a bull trap and this morning pre-market was the clue. We had already started hourly consolidation into pre-market and from then on we were just in a five minute downtrend all day pretty much on SPY and we lost their first support at 385 and then we lost our second support here at 382.50 and then we had 380.20 which we ultimately held but it was getting pretty shaky there for a while and all we were holding EMA 12, but we're coming up to some crucial levels here. SPY is still a, a ways away before it tests weekly support, but QQQ down here at 305.18 and we have EMA 26, if not down at 
30104 and 300 psychological obviously going to be very, very important. But I do want to take a look at the 50-day moving average as well. So we did lose the 50 and we closed below it. I told time and time again and a caution that big tech has been very, very weak. That's why I've been very sh uh, short on the sector and SPY holding its 50. But if that's any indication, QQQ has been leading this whole run since March of last year. So um, the fact that it's losing its 50 means to be cautious that SPY could be doing the same as well. So all about that 305 and 300 support. If we lose that, we have nothing down till 266 and we would lose the weekly uptrend and a significant momentum shift to the bears. So that's pretty much it. We're just going to wrap it up. So the dollar is bouncing, but again, no real change. It's just keeping it simple. Look at the weekly chart. We have support at 89.20, so we're looking for a higher low. And if we break 91.60, that confirms a weekly uptrend the first time since last year. And that would be a notable momentum shift. But right now, we are right at support on SPY and, and QQQ. And SPY held 380.20. So we'll see how we do into tomorrow. SMH down over 5%. IWM down 3% over U.S. oil held up very well, basically flat, so holding the market up. XLE only down a little less than 2%, didn't even start daily consolidation yet. So we, if we see bearish follow through in the energy, in U.S. oil and the energy sector tomorrow, that could be bad. XLF started daily consolidation, closed near the low of the day. XLV, daily consolidation, so nobody was spared. And like I said, gold and silver, silver just broke the low of yesterday. And gold, very, very weak in comparison. But silver, over 2% of a pullback here today. But gold closer to support. And silver holding up better than gold. Still quite a ways away from its support down here at 26.48. And we have resistance at 28.32. And then a lack up till the $30 range. So we're going to end it there. Make sure to be cautious and watch those correlations. So if you're wondering why SPY was down today, you need to be watching crypto and Tesla, in my opinion, because that was the, the clue. And as long as crypto is consolidating and Tesla's consolidating, doesn't mean that SPY and the rest of the sector can't go up or an individual stock or sector can't go up while the rest is going down. It's just it's, it's headwinds and the most likely scenario is we head lower and like I said, until these correlations are no more, we will continue to monitor them until they no longer work and to, you know, until it's no longer successful. And once we start to see those diverge from one another, then we will start to you know, use our regular indicators and price action, that type of thing. But I can't tell you how many times in the last couple of days that I've seen early signals from Bitcoin and then it happened in Tesla and then it happened in stock. So it saved my butt a lot of the time and I will continue to trade that pattern as long as it works. Thanks for joining us on the Pursuit of Wealth for a daily market recap and we'll see you tomorrow.